Hey guys, Ben Mechanic Shop here. So today I'm going to winterize the 2008 Sea-Doo Challenger 180 with the 215 horsepower Rotax engine. So I'll show you what you have to do first. But first, here's what you're going to need. So an empty jug for your oil, some storage oil, of course your key because you'll have to start it. I find that it's nice to have the quick connect fitting for your hose. Uh, you need some fuel stabilizer, a pump to pump the oil out of your engine because there's no drain plug at the bottom, and some uh, winter antifreeze. So the first thing we're going to do is put the uh, fuel stabilizer in the tank. The tank's already full on this one, so you should fill it up to the top uh like every week every year when you gas store it and that's prevent space for moisture to accumulate and uh, with the cooling down and warming up in the spring and in the fall so uh yeah top up your fuel tank first uh, always use premium fuel in those engines and then uh, uh, this engine in particular uh, this boat in particular is a 21 gallon uh, fuel tank capacity so uh, the stabilizer here just tells me the number and liters uh, so 30 uh, 21 gallon and liters is about 95.6 or whatever something like that uh, so this is yeah so 95.6 liter uh, or 94.6 anyway uh, so this takes like 100 milliliters per 30 liters so we have to put 300 just a little bit over 300 milliliters in there so here's the milliliters on the side so we're about at five so one two three so I want to keep just a little bit under 200 and we'll be good so we're adding that straight into the fuel tank and uh, you want to do that first because you'll need to run your engine in order to do the oh, that's good in order to do the oil change because you want to warm up your uh, you want to warm up your oil so it's easier to go through your pump so uh, uh, because you're doing that then your fuel is gonna go to all of your fuel line and all this stuff so if you put the fuel stabilizer first then uh, you're you're making sure that all the lines are gonna stay good for the winter. So the next thing we're going to do is connect this part of the quick connect here to the boat uh, because when you run the engine out of the water, you need to actually have a hose connected to it. Uh, you shouldn't run those engine out of the water for too long. Anyway. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that on camera, but here that's where you can thread your quick connect. You're just gonna make it way easier to do the job instead of trying to connect the holes all the time. Of course I had to drop it. Okay, get started. You can move the bucket down here. It's gonna make it easier. So yeah, so now I get disconnected. Now I can connect the other side to the hose. Okay, so I got the flex garden hose connected to it now. Now you wanna wait for a second, like before you turn the water on. I get the tap on this hose, um, cause you're gonna flood the engine. If you don't pinch some hose in there into your engine compartment, if you stir the hose right away. So with mine, I can stir it and I get a quick connect. I get the valve, a quarter turn valve on the hose. So I can uh, stir my hose and then when I'm ready to stir the boat, I can come and turn the hose on here. So now I'll turn on the hose. So now I get the hose connected, prime, ready to go with water in here. 
So we're gonna go inside the boat and stir it, and then uh, should never let it run without water for more than five seconds. So we'll have to rush out of the boat, or if you have assistance, get somebody to help you. And then you stir it, and then you stir the hose right away. Okay, so now that we got the hose connected, we're gonna start the engine. Before you start the engine, like if you have a CD boat, you already know that you need to start the fan for a few minutes. I already did, so I'm just gonna start it now. Just start it. Now we're just gonna go right away. Start the water at the back. suck up the oil out of there so this neat little pump here I have a small hose that goes right into the tube here should I bring myself some rags but anyway um, so yeah we'll install that and then I'll start pumping in this jug here so usually I'll put the jug down in here somewhere so that it doesn't have to go up too much and fight gravity for the pump and that can just keep draining nice and easy so it's like a vacuum pump this thing you just uh, keep keep going up and down with it and then it'll suck the oil out and then out of this black hose and then it pumps it into the red hose yeah, so now i'm just feeding the hose down the tube I think it should be close to the bottom here. I'm still feeling a little bit of resistance. So the pump. And I'll put the other end of the hose in the bucket here. And it might be a bit hard to do that, but one end, so I'll try to put the phone down and then just show you on the side here. into this hose and that's not going to uh, suck up the oil so you can see it going into the tube slowly so when you press it down it does suction and then when you raise it back up it let the old oil go to the bottom part of the pump and as you're putting pressure to suction to suck more in, then it's, uh, it's pushing at the bottom the oil that uh, is underneath. Okay, so the, so the pump is just sucking up air now. So we're done taking the oil out of the engine. So let's see how much we got in my big container here. So we get the bottom of the 
cunt in there full anyway. It doesn't take too much. I think it just takes like three three liters to fill up this thing, two and a half liters. Uh, yeah, so that's not too much oil. Okay, so it's getting dark in there, so I had to go get myself a flashlight and before I could continue this. Because uh, we're already in October. I want to hurry up to winterize everything because they're calling for frost in the weekend. We're in the middle of the week right now, so I've got some time to get it done. But I have to do that at after work. And the sun goes down early here in Canada in October. So anyway, so now I open this, we're gonna fill up our oil and then we'll uh, we'll check the spur plug and uh, do the storage oil and run some uh, RV antifreeze in the system in a second. So we get our funnel and we'll put the oil in. So I buy this kit here. Comes with your filter. Uh, should have an o-ring in here and uh, some oil. It's the SPS lubricant kit for both uh, 5W40. <laughs> some samples here. Yeah, synthetic blend. Sorry, it said semi synthetic. Synthetic. Yeah, so it looks like it comes with like three and a half liter jug there. Now we have to do the oil filter after changing the oil. So I bought a special socket for this. And I bought both. No, of course, it's all in the middle of the night, all of the stores are closed, and I can't find it. So anyway, that also work. It's a 5 and 516 socket. The kit comes with new o ring, so you'll have to be getting that. That kit, you don't have to get worried about breaking the o ring like I just did there. I can pass it on there, this supposed to pop it on this side. Now it's free. Filters are just a true filter, so it doesn't matter which way you're putting it. There's no face up or face down. So just push it so you have it center here. And on the cap, there's two o ring. So there's the small one that broke earlier, and then there's the other one here. So this this one will replace right now, and then the other one fit at the edge here. 
kind of double seal the cap, I guess it's probably so that there's no dirt or water that can come and push on that hole in here. So I just used a flat screwdriver and I pulled this off. So the thicker o-ring sits in the groove at the bottom and the smaller o-ring just sits at the top like this. <coughs> now the cut off part, the part that's flat like this, is going towards the driver side on the engine. Oh, I forgot to tell you, like, I looped up the o-ring with a little bit of foil. Makes it easier to pop in and so that you don't break anything. Like, you know, or apart when you pop it pop it in so you just kind of push it like you put it on there pretty straight well straight with the housing not straight up and down there because it's sitting a little bit at like a 30 degree angle or whatever so yeah so you just make it on the same angle and then you push it and it yeah, slide in and after that you can start your boat You should inspect that the whole ring here on that boat there. Minus point. Just like the spark bag, you don't want to put this too tight. Yeah, just tight enough so that it doesn't pop out. It's the o ring that does the seal, right? So, doesn't matter if you put a lot of pressure on it or not. Plus, that boat there at the end, there's a, there's a stopper anyway after the tread. So, you can rank, yank on it as many times as, as much as you want. You won't put more pressure on those o ring just end up breaking something so so yeah put it all the way down and then give it like a eighth of a turn after a touch and then you'll be fine doing it with one end is a pain in the back I might not have a tripod for my camera okay so anyway so a, a touch and then We'll just go a little bit more. I already went a little bit more before I said that. So anyway, so that would have been like pretty much an eighth of a turn there. So this is done. So I filmed a video yesterday and I'm editing it today. And then I realized that unfortunately I'm missing some of the footage. Um, about uh, putting the RV to freeze into the boat but it's already done right? I guess I pressed the wrong button when I was filming it so uh, anyway I'm just gonna run through what you have to do to do it I can't do it right now because uh, I already did the whole thing so the engine is fogged and uh, all that stuff but um, yeah let's go through that pretty quick so here I have a piece of hose that I cut so this, I put the quick connect on this, usually hook it underneath the, the bolt, the quick connect. And then I made it long enough so I can just go through here, like this, through the handle. And then I put the funnel at the end. And then with the funnel like this, I just put a couple of rag to hold it up more like this. And then... Um, you need to go and start the boat and then after the boat is starting uh, you do like when you were doing the water earlier uh, you just but instead of water it's the RV antifreeze which is safe for the environment and it's non-toxic so now you're gonna pour that into your funnel you'll see that the funnel will fit up and then it, it won't really go down that fast uh, 
takes a little bit before it starts to go through the system. And then you're just gonna keep topping up your funnel and filling it up. Don't worry about how much is going in there and stuff. Like I buy the big bottle, but uh, the big jug, but with uh, just a one liter jug, you would have enough to do that. And then you would do that until you would see the pink uh, rushing out. So at the beginning, it's gonna be the remaining of your water that you had from running the boat earlier when we warm up the oil for the water change, uh, for, the, for the oil change. And then, uh, so, it, so that's gonna run clear, and then whenever it starts running pink, then you're good. That means it went through the whole system. So, anyway, that cost almost nothing for this, I think. It's like nine bucks Canadian for a big jug like this. So anyway, I apologize. I don't have that footage live, but anyway, let's uh, let's keep with the let's keep going with the video. So now we have to remove the spur plug in order to fuck the engine. So to remove the spur plug, first you're gonna remove this little breather on the side here. It just push sideways out of this clip here. You need to remove the dipstick. And then we just lift this cover right out. I can put the dipstick back in if you don't want no dirt to come in. There's three cylinders on those engine. So you gotta take your boot out. You can unclip it if if you want to. Or let's unclip it. So you just push down and push out. Now you take your boot out, you go inspect for oil residue and stuff in there. Now I put a lot of the, like, the grease on, the, on those things, so you can never really have anything in there. Uh, no corrosion or nothing. So for the spur plug, it's a 5 8 socket. You need a small extension, like... Uh, two inch, three inch extension. Now, those stupid socket I bought don't have the boot inside to be able to pull the spur plug out. So anyway, so what you do, it's crack it open. All right, so just because of I'm doing the video and it's too hard to do the socket and a ratchet with one end in there. I'll just finish in the spur plug like this or just the extension in the socket. So now it's loose. The spur plug don't come. Ah, because there's no boot, so you use this boot here. You just put it on the spur plug. Just click and it'll come right out. The same one you want to put it back in. You don't want it tap the end there so you put it back on there and then you just push it put it at the bottom and then you start twisting and there's a bit of resistance you can, you can put it back out yeah okay I don't know how that part of the video is gonna turn out because uh, switch it to turn off the, turn on the engine Make it turn over is a little bit far, and I won't be able to hold the phone and fuck the engine in the same time, so I'll just show you anyway. So you just uh, fuck it like this, and then usually I do a couple squirt too, as uh, with the engine turning over. Uh, maybe I should put this back in here, make sure. That there's nothing splashing in that tube. So yeah, there's no spur plug in those boots, so nothing can fire up. So I'll just crank it over. Double beep. Okay. Usually what I'll do is 
do that, usually I ask somebody to help me and then I'll have like a rag as I'm turning it over onto the other cylinder and then I'll uh, I'll spray one cylinder at the time and then somebody can just keep cranking it and then I'll do the three cylinder. Alright, so I'll skip that part because I need to do it with the phone down. Okay, so I got the storage oil in there. Now I'm going to put the spur plug back in. So to put the spur plug in, if you don't have a socket that has the boot in there, so you can grab one of those boots, just press here to unclip it and you pull. And then it comes apart from this plug here. Now you can put a spur plug here and put the boot in, do it a couple turns and take the boot out and then take your socket and tighten it. So just like this here. So you don't want to let your spur plug fall in because you're probably going to change the gap by banging the end of, of it. And yeah, that's important that this gap there at the end here stays the same. Or it will change how strong the spark is. Okay, so I put everything tight by end, and then now we're just gonna tighten up the socket a little bit. Not too tight. So it's tight, maybe, good. maybe like an eighth of a turn. You don't want to put it too tight because you don't want to break it in there. There we go. So that's good enough, and now we're ready to put the boots back on. There's still a lot of like, grease on them, so I won't put nothing, but if you have some ND and you didn't do that yet, then put some like, the grease on there. It's going to keep the rust away. So now we just take the dipstick back out. And then we're going to put the cover back on here. Iron up with the dipstick and it'll be fine. There we go, just like this. And this breather needs to go back in here. Just like that. Stick back in, I'll just give it another wipe. Alright, I just give it a little wipe off camera. Okay, now this is back in. Alright, so what's next? Well, I have a water pump, a bilge pump in those boats, and uh, there's always a little bit of water. It's hard to see here, it looks like a little messy here, but anyway, the bilge pump's at front of the engine right here. Um, so that can freeze too. So what I like to do for the winter, it's I'll put some Harvey antifreeze down in the bilge and then I'll start the pump for a second. So you can try to pump all your water out and stuff like that, but that's, uh, it's better to have a little bit of Harvey antifreeze in there to make sure that your pump won't freeze up just in case if there's water I don't know if you're storing your boat inside or outside I store mine into a carport, a carport outside but just in case you never know what's gonna happen right? carport broke or anything like that and then uh, or the boat cover breaks or rip or something and then we'll end up having some water going into the boat. Now, Dutch wood, I guess that kind of counts, it's cardboard, comes from wood. So, nothing like that's gonna happen. Anyway, so now I get some Irvian to freeze in there. Some nice pink water at the bottom of the bilge. So, I'll just start the pump real quick. Oh, 
way it helps. Pump a little bit red. Yeah, see it's starting to like cloud a little bit around that water there. It's because it's pumping so hard we and freeze it. So now I get the engine protected, the pump protected, everything's protected. Um, you should I put new coolant in there last year and the coolant is fine. It's all at the I changed the old coolant so I get new coolant in there so it's fine it tested good but uh, anyway you should also test your coolant just to make sure that uh, the freezing point is good so it doesn't crack. Okay, so now you have to test your coolant freezing point. Now here in Canada it gets like up to minus 30 Celsius sometime in the winter. So I want to make sure that the engine is protected at least here. Yeah, don't open that too fast if you had the engine running earlier. Now the next thing to do to get your boat ready for storage is actually remove your battery. Move your battery and put that on the trickle charge for the winter. And another thing you can do too, because you're sort if you're servicing everything, then the, the Canon filter. It's time to clean it now and and uh, re-oil it. So let's take the battery out of the boat to be able to plug it on a trickle charger for the winter. So for this, you need a 916 socket. I always start by taking the positive cable out all the time. You take positive, it's always a good habit to have because if you take positive out first and same when you put the battery back in, put the positive cable on last and then uh, even if the positive is connected when you're unscrewing your cable What's gonna happen is if you t touch the side, and there's nothing on the boat to touch that will spark, but if you would touch the side on your car or your truck or whatever, on the frame or body or whatever, well, this is all fiberglass, so nothing is gonna happen, but uh, just an habit. Um, so if you do that and you're on the negative cable, with your socket and your wrench or your ratchet and you touch it won't matter because you're touching ground anyway so uh, yeah just a good habit to have so and then when you go to the positive wire then there's no more ground so it doesn't matter what you touch you're gonna be okay so you just have to take that strap out Around the, the cable, there's two ground cable, one positive cable, and this can just get lifted out of here. It's a little bit baby and clean, but it's all worth it to have a good battery for next season. Now I just put the battery on the shelf with my other batteries. And then just like that. Positive the same on the other positive. And now I can put the trickle charge on this one. 
trickle charge this winter. I just have one trickle charger, so I'm going through all those batteries all the time. Uh, those are for if I have power voltage in the house, I have inverters. Uh, they, so I can bring those battery and plug in an inverter for a little bit. And those are my two bolt battery. I got two. Uh, just in case one falls at one fell one time in the weekend or whatever, it doesn't work anymore or don't charge anymore, then uh, I'm not stuck having to pass a weekend on land. <laughs> right? When it's boat season, you don't want to be on the water all the time. So better have two batteries and be on the water than just one battery and waiting for the store to open. Okay, so now that the boat is winterized, I should take the time to actually, if you have grease buddies on your tires, do the grease buddies and also check the PSI for your tires. This trailer is calling for 50 PSI. So I'll put 50 here. Yeah, that's the Royal B inflator there. I will review about this on my Royal B channel too. It's pretty handy to have. Every time you go out with this trailer, you should. Uh, so now it's at 50, or the battery is dead, one or the other, uh, battery is dead, um, so yeah, those trailer there, every time you, sh you put your boat in the water, like, you should re-grease it or every few time anyway, because it gets full of water, even though you fill it up with grease, there's always some water that makes its way in this somehow. Alright, I didn't have too much water this time. Just a little touch. But anyway, yeah, you don't want to let, let this sit with water all winter. Like, you know, don't want your wheel bearing to sit in the water all winter, that's what I mean. Put your rubber back in. Give that a little wipe. Alright, let's change the battery in here and then we can start this again. Thing is, I just fill up my four tire on that pickup truck with this, and that's a small battery. So it needs a new one. All right, guys. Well, anyway, uh, while I was waiting for the battery to charge, I did the other tire on the other side and a grease buddy and fill up the pressure. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, you get the idea. That's all you want to raise your boat, get it ready for the winter so that uh, it's ready for next summer. All right, happy boating. So hopefully this video was helpful, I uh, hope you like it, uh, if you do like and subscribe and then I'm going to make more video like this, like I have to winterize my, tra my uh, camping trailer and tons of stuff at the property of the grid, so that's where I'm going this weekend, um, yeah, so maybe we'll see you in the next video.